everybody dr rick wallace dropping in on you hope everybody is having an unbelievable day as for me uh business as usual uh, doing what i need to do to live up to my end of the bargain with god uh, told him i would give it everything i had if he woke me up i would answer the bell made that promise a long time ago and to this point i've done pretty good at it um I am coming here because it's just something that I need to address. Uh, I want to remind you, we're still in the push of the fundraiser for the Black Men Lead Right of Passage Initiative. Uh, we need your support. Uh, the organization actually needs your support on all levels from research, program development, program implementation, and more. We need your support. So go to the description box. Uh, either click the link and go to the page or go directly to the processor or you can give through the organization's uh, cash app account however you do it know that we need your support now on to something i'm about to show you a video of a young lady who is speaking and obviously based off of the large following and the co-signing that's on the video and on other platforms on which the video has been shared, there are a lot of people who agree with her opinion. But in this video, she basically alludes to the fact that the LGBTQ community has expanded the definition of homophobia, which I agree with on all terms. And I'm going to come back and deal with that after you see this very short clip. It's not long at all, but it's expanded now to black women specifically. And I can I can project out who all else it, ex it, 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 it uh, is extended to, but specifically to black women who don't want to date bisexual men. They are now homophobic. And the level of ignorance that has to go into developing a mentality and a mindset and a position like this uh, is astronomical. Because first of all, you have to have an ignorance of the word phobia, which I'm going to get into. And then you have to totally be hypocritical by saying, I have a right to choose who I want to sleep with, but then demand that someone else doesn't have that same right but i want you to listen to this and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to give you my closing statement um check it out mm, okay so this is what you guys tell yourself i follow a creator on here who literally said this that black women think that because they tolerate the LGBTQ community, that they're not homophobic. But that's not how that works, my love. You keep saying that you don't hate them. And like, that's like a bare minimum. It would be really weird if you did hate them. But even though you don't hate them, you don't want them around you. You don't want to date a bisexual man, even though you date men. And a bisexual man has no look. You could be walking down the street and think a man is fine as hell and he's bisexual. Because bisexual has no look or no bearings on how your partner is going to treat you. The fact that you are so adamant that you will not date a bisexual man because they sleep with men. Because they sleep with men is your reason. Baby, that's homophobia. Just because you don't hate them doesn't mean anything. There are plenty of white people that don't hate us. They just don't want to be around us. Newsflash, just like those white people are racist, you're still a homophobe. All right, mm -hmm. now, my thing is, and I've said this before, I have an opinion about homosexuality. I am not a supporter of the gay lifestyle, especially for blacks, especially, especially for black men, because I know the dynamic outturn of how that's going to work out for us on a social uh, and grand scale on a racial level. On a personal level, it's your choice. You do what you want to do. I have family members, very close and dear to me family members, that are a part of that community that I love unconditionally. They know this. They know they can come to me and I'm going to be there for them. And we don't, and the funny thing is about it, when you really truly think about this in a natural sense, how much of your sexuality as a heterosexual is a part of your decision making process outside of who you're going to date? How often does it come up with your parents? How often does it come up with your friends? 
you know, once, you know, you know, when we was younger, we were talking about, oh, man, I got with old girl, blah, 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 uh, or she talking about girl and that bear, whatever, when we were younger. But as we matured, how much of our sex life is a part of our natural conversation? We have our preferences. We have our preferences in size. We have our preferences in complexion, whether we want to admit it or not. We have our pregnant preferences in social fluidity you know where they are in their career where they are in their level of knowledge we have all these preferences and all these preferences are our prerogative people may not like them people may not people may not approve of them but that's the beauty of being in a place where you get to choose it's your preference so when it comes to gays it's your preference on a social scale and on a grand scale when i'm talking about the black community do i agree with it no am i going to judge anyone for it absolutely not it's not my place but I am going to say what I feel about it on a grand scale if asked. I don't go around uh, asserting my particular opinion on anybody because that's my place, my opinion. I am going to live my life freely, and so I want everybody else to have the same right. Just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean I have the right to infringe upon it. But guess what? I'm going to expect the same level of respect in return to me. I gave you, out of respect, out of uh, appreciation of your rights Th to stay out of your business i'm not on anybody's page telling them how bad they are because they're gay i'm not attacking anybody that's gay matter of fact i'm loving my family me members and friends i have several friends matter of fact i had a gay roommate for a significant period almost a year we still remain cool and close never got out of line never got disrespectful because he knew i was genuine i knew he was genuine and we're still close matter of fact we, it was three of us two of us were hetero heterosexual uh and one was gay or bisexual however it was didn't get into the discussion of all that i knew that he was dealing with that because he talked to me about it on occasion from a position of him dealing with it emotionally i have him emotionally moved on i'm not here to judge anybody on a personal level it's your choice on a grand scheme socially i'm talking about how it impacts us as a whole and that is a part of the discussion me personally i don't cut for it period but i, I i'm for you doing your thing having your right because I don't want nobody telling me what I'm going to do, who I can choose, who I can be with. So uh, you do your thing. If, now, if you ask me, you're going to get my opinion. You're going to get my stand on it. And I'm not going to be wavering in it. I'm not here to coddle. Here's my thing. If you want the respect and the appreciation of your rights to choose, you've got to return that. And that's one thing that the LGBTQ community has not done. It's insisting upon people not only giving them their space, but participating in it. You get what I'm saying? First of all, if you said anything negative about a person who happened to be gay, it was because they were gay. Uh, and, you know, listen to the way it is. I'm sick and tired also of the LGBT community uh, trying to equate what they deal with when someone doesn't agree with their lifestyle, trying to equate it to what we deal with in racism as blacks. I have a problem with that because it's different on so many different levels. Let me explain something. First and foremost, I want to be clear here because ignorance plays a major role in misunderstanding and uh, the mistreatment and mishandling of people. People have mishandled people for years because of ignorance. Gay people want to be understood, but they don't want to understand anybody else. They don't want to be aware or respect anyone else's position. If you don't accept me wholly, if you don't allow me to move in your space completely freely, if you don't look at me and see me as anyone else without uh, considering my sexuality, but the whole thing is your whole identity is based on your sexuality, but you want me to be around you and pretend like your sexuality doesn't exist, but you keep throwing it out there. When you sit up there and say, I don't walk around saying I'm a heterosexual man. I live my life. People who observe me will kind of get an idea and they look at my wife and they see how I move and they look at my past relationships and they say, okay, and don't, I've never seen a dude in it. So obviously he's not gay or bi, so he must be heterosexual. Well, but you don't hear me saying it. Yet, you guys wear this big, proud thing, and that's your thing. 
But when you, you got to know when you do it, you draw things to you. you. People have a right. You don't get to sit up and be on a platform and think that people aren't going to be there wanting to push you off of it. If you don't want to be pushed off a platform, if you don't want the pressure of being on the platform, don't stand on it. But when you keep hollering from the top of your lungs who you are, you're going to have people who are going to uh, respond to that. My thing is, you got a right to do all of that, but know what comes with it. My problem is when you sit up and you use, as a mental health expert, when you sit up and use the term phobia to describe anyone who doesn't agree with you, anyone who's not on the same page, anyone who even shows animosity, dislike, or hatred towards you, it's an inaccurate assertion, it's an inaccurate application, and I take personal offense to it because it robs the mental health community of a real true mental health disorder. A phobia is by definition a an irrational fear of something. Irrational means that when you look at the fear, it's not simply a fear, it's a fear that moves beyond what can be expected reasonably and rationally. I'll give you an example. A person who suffers from arachnophobia is a person who suffers from an irrational fear of spiders. An example of how that would play out in real life is a person watching TV and a picture of a live spider or not comes on, the person begins to break out in a sweat, begins to uh, experience a panic attack from a spider on the television. That's arachnophobia. Not only a fear of spiders, but an irrational fear of spiders that can paralyze your behavior, that can send you into a panic attack. That's a phobia. A phobia is not me saying I don't like what you do. A phobia is not even me saying I hate you. A phobia is not even... Now, that's, that, that's bigotry. Call it what it is. If somebody doesn't like you for, because of who you are, that's a form of bigot, bigotry and prejudice. It's not a phobia. It's a catchphrase created to uh, cause shame, to tr create guilt, to create a political storm that will cause people to rally around you. But the truth of the matter is, it's not a phobia. Now, the, the, the crazy thing about it is that the vast majority of people who are being accused of being homophobic don't even hate you, don't dislike you. And she uses the term tolerate. No, I don't just tolerate gays. I'm, if I tolerate gays, then I tolerate everybody because I have a certain level where I don't want anybody around me. It has nothing to do with your sexual preference, your color, or anything. I like my space. But as it pertains to me, it doesn't bother me uh, if a person sitting next to me is white, gay, straight, whatever, whatever, whatever. I deal with most people by the way they deal with me. I deal with general situations as far as the white community with the way the white community has dealt with my people. When I deal with individuals, I deal with them on an individual basis. I have friends who have proven themselves to be friends over years who are white, who are gay, and who are bisexual, and I treat them as such. The fact that I am never going to be in a homosexual relationship or that I don't want to be with someone who is openly bisexual has absolutely nothing to do with bigotry, has absolutely nothing to do with being a phobia. I'm not afraid. I'm not fearful. I can have just as much fun with you as the next person. I just don't want to build a life with you. I literally, on a notion of that magnitude, have a right to determine exactly what kind of value system I want to connect with. And the idea that someone can come along and say, because you don't want to be a part of our community, that's all. No, that's your community. And just as you, so my thing is, if a gay person decides that they don't, a gay man decides that he does not want to date a, 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 a um, heterosexual male or whatever, or female, does that make him heterophobic? I want to, I want to, I know, why, why is it that, and, and this is something that a person actually said, okay, I only want to date a black woman. This is a man saying this who agrees with this, what this young girl just said. He, he's a black man who says, I only want to date a black woman and it's because of blah, blah, blah. I will admit that that may be prejudice, but I only want to date a black woman. Now to sit up and say that, uh, it does, and it doesn't matter to me 
that she is, whether she's bisexual or heterosexual. Just want to date a black woman. Now the thing is, watch how this is played. Watch how this narrative is being pushed. Now, if he doesn't want to date a white woman, it's just a prejudice. But if he doesn't want to date a bisexual woman, it's a phobia. No, it's a prejudice. It's a prejudice, just in the same way. But it doesn't have the same ring because prejudice and prejudices are experienced all the time. Prejudices are a part of life. Everyone has a prejudice. Everyone has a preference. Everyone has what they like and what they don't like. So you can't get a win off of that. But if you say someone's a phobic, then it's something wrong with them. And it takes it off of maybe they just don't want to be in this situation and that's their right. But when someone sits up and actually takes that and says, because you don't want to date, uh, because a black woman doesn't want to date a black bisexual man, she's a homophobic. I told you guys a long time ago that if we weren't careful, they were going to keep pushing until they pushed us completely out of the picture, that we weren't going to be welcome in our own spaces. I told you this. Everybody was sitting up saying that. That's homophobic. No. Is sitting up telling you they're not satisfied with having their space. They got their space some time ago. Nobody's really pushing them. People say people say things about everybody all the time. Everybody's fair game at some point in time, especially when it comes to comedians, it comes to celebrities, it comes to music, and it comes to, to artists and things of that nature. Everybody's fair game. Somebody's saying something about somebody. The crazy thing that gets me. Uh, let's go to the to the baby real quick. Dude been calling black women bees and hoes out the gate. Black dude been talking about all kind of violence towards black men out the gate. Not one company canceled him. As a matter of fact, he got all the bookings that he just got dropped from because he said something that upset the LGBTQ community. Dude got dude had all those bookings, and he had been disrespecting black women disrespecting black men talking about and pushing a notion and poisoning the minds of our children to be violent towards one another glorifying uh drug use and selling drugs and he was embraced by all nobody counseled him he was booked on all these tour stops and everything nobody counseled him said one thing that upset the black, uh, I mean the LBT, uh, the LBTQ, LBTG community, and all of a sudden, gigs canceled right and left. He apologized. Nope, we don't care. Gigs canceled right and left. I'm not a fan of the baby because for years this is what he's been doing to the black community. Nothing done. That should tell you a whole lot about how we are perceived in this country. Nobody cares who disrespects us. Nobody cares who mishandles us. That's why it's our responsibility to take care of ourselves. That's why it's our responsibility to be on top of our game. That's why we need to start building our own so that we can determine who will uh, put out music in our community, what type of music it will be, what we will accept, what we will not accept. Nobody cares. They are writing our narrative for us. They are telling us who we're going to be. They're telling us what we're going to accept. We are now in a situation where there is literally a person who says that if a straight person doesn't want to marry a bisexual person, they're homophobic. And there is literally a following for it. There are people co-signing it. That's the level of ignorance we're operating from. Number one is not liking somebody's lifestyle does not make you a phobic. In order to actually experience a phobia, it's a highly irrational mental disorder that does not make sense to the average or in a natural situation or understanding. It's not somebody seeing a spider and jumping and go, oh my God, kill it. That's not even a phobia. That's not an arachnophobia. Somebody seeing a spider and oh my God, kill it, getting scared and screaming. That's not a Somebody sitting up and there's a spider on the television and it sends them into an absolute panic. That's, an, that's a phobia. It's not just fear. It's an irrational fear that makes absolutely no sense. Me sitting up saying, you know what? I'm really not feeling your lifestyle, but you do you. I'm going to do me. 
and, and, and we'll agree to be who we are and, and, and be respectful of one another. It's not a phobia. Me even sitting up saying, you know what, I think that's fucked up. It's still not a phobia. There's no irrational fear. I haven't lost my mind. I sit up and I, matter of fact, a significant number of my clients have been and are in some way non-traditional or not traditional hetero heterosexuals. And, and, and it spans in so many different ways. I'm not afraid of any of them. I absolutely love my clients and I work very hard to give my clients everything they need. There's no phobia. And it offends me when people use it because I know what a real phobia looks like. And they're using it for political uh, leverage and social leverage. Instead of just living your life and letting people do what they do. It's, you know, okay, I see if somebody walk, if you walk in and somebody can ascertain that you're a member of the LGBTQ community, and if I didn't call it right, oh well. Uh, but it, it wasn't done out of disrespect. I've just never been able to leverage and keep changing the more LGBTQ. I think that was right. Okay, if they sit up and say, okay, I'm not serving you. Now, me personally, uh, if that if it's based on religious beliefs, I say go for it. Now, me personally, my religious beliefs don't call me. I don't. First of all, I don't have religious belief. I'm not a religious person. But when I was operating within the religion, I never thought that my religion required me to discriminate or to dismiss. Now, am I going to officiate your 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 your, your ceremony? Probably not, because that would be against my beliefs. But you coming in and say, "Okay, I need counseling," or you when I, uh, with my fitness business, "Okay, I need a fitness program." I'm gonna do treat you just like every other client that walks through the door. But some people may discriminate because of that. That's discriminatory, and you know that's a different thing. It's still not a phobia. It's discrimination. It, it needs to be dealt with. How you how, how discrimination is dealt with, but we have to be very 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 careful, and we have to educate ourselves as to what's really happening here. It's absolutely necessary that we do so. Look, I'm gonna get off of here. Uh, I wasn't even meaning to go that long. I'm still gonna be popping in on you guys on tomorrow uh, with an interview I'm doing with a young brother. Um, about BLM, uh, about COVID passports, um, where we at with the state of this whole pandemic, uh, and so much more. Uh, we're going to do that tomorrow morning, so be looking out for that. But I just had to drop that on you. I mean, go back and listen to this young lady and how forceful she is and how convinced she is she's right. And then go find her on social media and find out how many people actually are agreeing with her. And I'm not meaning pe got people who are a part of the LGBTQ community. I'm meaning people who are claiming to be heterosexual are actually buying into that. Why? Because that's the narrative that's being pushed in the media. You're going to learn that I'm telling you the truth um, about how the media shapes the narrative, how the media, media will shape your belief systems, how the media will have you sitting up and moving against your own uh, your own interests because you're believing what the media is presenting. The fact that people actually believe because you don't, as a straight person, don't want to be with a bisexual person means you're a homophobic. That is absolutely ridiculous. There's no type of actual medical data. The very idea that the assertion that I disagree with your lifestyle makes me phobic of your lifestyle it's absolutely unfounded. There's no irrational fear involved. That's what a phobia is. And we have to make sure that we're using things accurately and not misapplying them for the for the sake of leverage. But on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out here. Don't forget, we still need your support. Go to the description box, click the link, or give through the uh, Cash App account for the Odyssey Project. I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, 
uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.